Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna be doing a little bit of planting around the cut flower shed actually. Feels a little bit weird. Here we are so close to Christmas and it's chilly out, but it's not too bad. It's rather muddy though. I don't know how this is gonna be. We're gonna to attempt to plant the rest of the bulbs that I held back when I initially planted all the bulbs in the orchard. I held back, I think a thousand bulbs to plant directly around the flower shed because I just didn't want to upset the ground too much around where they needed to walk. And I just don't know when that's gonna happen and we're gonna run out of time. So the weather, it looks like we're, we have a big system coming our way. We're supposed to get, I don't know, several inches later this week of snow. And then we're gonna have temp temperatures down in the teens. So yeah, I just don't wanna lose my opportunity because I do not wanna waste all these bulbs. Here are all the bulbs. So they're not big ones and we don't have to plant them as deep as you would say a daffodil or a tulip. So so that's nice it shouldn't be it shouldn't take us too long there are more than a thousand here though as i'm looking i've got 600 of the woodland blend we'll pop a picture up on the screen but it's a mix of the mini daffodils and uh, scillas i think squill um what else chianodoxa crocus and then we've got 300 grape hyacinths here We've got 200 Spanish bluebells, which I've actually never grown these before, so I'm very excited. And then we have 200 of the snake's head fritillaria, which are little itty bitty bulbs, little tiny ones. And then here's the cut flower shed with the orchard around it. You can see the taped off area is where we tilled and planted, oh, 8,000, I think already in this orchard area here. That includes the other side as well. Um, I did skip this section because the tractor wasn't able to get to this little, little piece here. So I'll try to plant a few right in here so it like is all even. And then it pretty much just starts right here in front of this tree and goes around the back of the shed. I don't know that I'm gonna plant a tremendous amount like directly behind here because we just won't see it. Here's our electrical box. And then as we round the back here, you can see it's pretty much the same on this other side. So I'll steer clear a little bit from our water accesses right here, our hose. So I'll probably, you know, I, and I'll stay away from directly like right up to the shed because we'll probably do some sort of small flower bed around the bottom. And the last time that we talked about the flower shed, I was talking about the possibility of maybe doing window boxes without really thinking that the windows all swing out, which is what I want. And that kind of eliminates kind of being able to have window boxes. And I say kind of because if I were to put window boxes here, I would probably install them down a little lower. So I would have some space, but I wouldn't be able to plant anything really tall. It would be limiting for sure. So that idea is out. Okay, so continuing on, you can see just pretty much in front of this apricot tree here and then in front of the apple tree right here. There's just a small space. And there's Russell. Hey buddy, you found me. You should just have like yourself a little bed in here and ride around with me. I kind of want to dig a test hole to see how this is going to go. I brought a shovel too. I might just have to do it with a shovel if the auger gets too muddied up. I just don't know how far down the water went. We only need to go about four inches deep. Oh yeah, this is going to work. That's perfect. It's got moisture, but it's definitely not too soggy. Oh, that makes me happy. I thought this job was gonna be an absolute mess. I think it's still gonna be a little messy, but not as bad as I thought. So I do have some biotone fertilizer out here. I will be tossing some of that in each of the holes, but I'm going to attempt to divide these bulbs and then mix them. So I've got the equal, equal amounts for each side of the flower shed. So let's do that first. Uh, and then I'll figure out how many bulbs I wanna put per hole. I'm thinking maybe seven or eight. Uh, and then we'll figure out how many holes we need to dig and we're just gonna get this done. Okay, so I've got two of the Spanish bluebells. Do that. Two of the snake's head fritillarias. 200 of the grape hyacinths, so two bags per side. One bag each of woodland blend and then we'll have to split one bag of the woodland blend in half. So I wonder if one of these bags can hold all of them to mix. I might have to go get a, a bigger bucket. You know what, I don't think I need to mix all of these up in a bag altogether. I think what I'll do is dig all my holes and then just split them up evenly based on how many holes I have on each side. So I've got 700 bulbs for each side. So if I put eight or nine bulbs in and they're such small bulbs, that'll be totally fine. If I do that for each hole, I'll probably have to dig, what, 80 some holes per side. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, <laughs> here we go.
we are ready for bulbs on this side and that took probably 10 minutes I want to say way less time than I thought it was going to we ended up with 11 holes in front of this tree and then I started in in front of this one and kind of just made my way around uh, I did leave a walking path here so that when they get ready to do the siding, which should be any day now, uh, they'll still have an area to walk that's not all fluffy and soft because that's a pain to walk in. Plus, I might come along and do a little planting in here uh, next season, or I'll just extend bulbs out later. But you can see all the holes right in here. And they go all the way around back to the pear tree. And again, I left this space accessible. I keep stopping to listen. Those of you guys who have small children, do you ever hear like phantom kid noises and you feel like they're somewhere out here? Benjamin does like to sneak up on me. I don't think he's out here though. He was just inside. Maybe I'm hearing the chickens from way down in the neighborhood. <laughs> Sometimes their sounds kind of sound similar to kids playing. Okay, so now I just need to take my bulbs and try to split them up evenly between all those holes. Uh, I do have a different amount, like I showed you before, of each of these varieties. So I'm going to take one variety at a time and try to split them evenly-ish. So I've got 81 holes and 100 of these fritillaria, which means I do one to two um, bulbs per hole. But I don't necessarily want them to be 100% even because I don't want it to look too contrived I guess so I'll probably do anywhere from one to five bulbs per hole and I'll probably skip some holes as well I think that might make it look a little bit more natural instead of having the exact same amount of flowers of each variety of flower coming out of each area before I get too far into the planting I did want to show you not Russell Russell stay back I wanted to show you the bulbs one more time I showed them to you in the initial planting video but it never hurts to look a second time and they all look a little different so this here is a grape hyacinth bulb you can see the growth point here there's a second one here. Roots come out the bottom, so plant that pointy side up. Spanish bluebells, a little bit of a different look. Uh, a little bit more round and flat, but you can see the growth point clearly right there. Jeez, Russell. Uh, earlier when I planted these, it was a little harder to tell because there were no growth points coming up. Like you couldn't see any of this growth coming, just like a little hole. So you had to look for the flat side on the bottom, and that's where the roots come out. Pardon us, Russell. Snake's head fritillaria, which might be a little confusing. They all kind of look like this. They split and then there's multiple what looks like growth points. But if you take a close look at it, you can find the roots right there at the bottom. So you point them with the roots facing down. And then these right here are the woodland blend or some of them. I don't know that I got all of the varieties out, but they all kind of have the same look. Uh, this is the small daffodil. So pointy side facing up. You can see the new growth coming out there. There are the roots. And then this one, I'm not sure which one this is. Is there hyacinth in that mix? Because it looks an awful lot like hyacinth. Anyway, you can clearly see the growth point there and the roots coming out the bottom. The crocus is really the only one that has a little bit of a different look in that blend. Um, so again, this is kind of like Spanish bluebells, a little bit more round and squat, but you can definitely see the new growth coming out. And then that rounded flat part on the bottom is where the roots grow. Now, can we get our planting done, Russell? Let's get the rest of them spread out. And then I'm just going to cover them over with soil. Now I always do this in shifts because if I were to aug 160 holes at the same time, I would probably get worn out really fast. But if I do it in sections and do some of the holes and then some of the fertilizer, some of the bulbs, some of the squatting work where I have to cover the holes over, if I do a little bit at a time, it makes the job a lot easier on me. So here we go again. <laughs> plant the bulbs on this side, I did want to mention something about the auger. So the nine inch auger, which we've showed you and talked about a lot, um, we use these, I think this is a cement mixer is what they call this drill, which is amazing, way better than the stud and joist drill that we were using before. 
Um, this one is a lot lighter weight. But these new nine inch augers have what's called a heavy duty tip right here. So the old ones didn't have that and it was actually kind of hard to dig holes with this. Uh, this drills a pilot hole essentially before the larger part of the auger goes in, but that means that there's a deeper spot in your hole right in the center. See right here? So this is the actual depth that I need this hole to be. And when you toss bulbs in, they always want to go down in that little hole and that's way too deep. And I end up having to dig them out and set them aside before I go in, you know, and do this. So if you can go along, sometimes the soil is fluffy enough that it kicks right back. See, this side was way better. Over there, almost every single hole had that middle section right there. And I completely forgot to go along and do this first. And if you remember to do that step, it takes just a couple of minutes and it will save you a ton of time in the long run. Uh, because if you have to go along to every hole and dig the bulbs that you just threw in the hole back out, and then plant them after you fill the center in, it just takes a lot longer. Anyway, um, you also might notice I'm not using gloves for this part. I have, one of my hands has a glove on it because it's just resting on the cold ground. Um, but I find it's a lot easier to turn the bulbs right side up because you know, I'm just throwing them in the hole. That doesn't mean that they're going in the hole perfectly. I want to go up to each one and place them, uh, but it's really hard with gloves on because some of those crocus bulbs in particular are tiny and it's really hard with gloves to get them turned the right way. So it's a lot faster if I just use my bare hand. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do on this side is go along, make sure that center hole is all covered in in, filled in and then I'll go toss my bulbs. I couldn't believe I'd forgot to do that the first time around. That probably would have saved me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And what do you think? Did you guys see him jump on my back while I was planting bulbs a minute ago? <laughs> what is your deal, bud? What is your deal? all planted I can't believe it's all done I'm so so thankful it's all done and I cannot wait to see what it looks like in the spring and, you know I've said it before but bulb planting is not one of my favorite things to do because it's just a tremendous amount of work but the payoff is so worth it because like right now it doesn't really look like much you know and that's just how it goes but in the spring it's just gonna be amazing and I am starting to get chilly it's 38 I just checked my phone 38 degrees so my face is starting to feel a little numb so the last thing I want to do out here I've got some beautiful greens I want to go uh, pick pull a bunch of them for the chickens and then I think I'm gonna call it <laughs> Isn't that just the most peaceful thing to watch? I could just throw a chair in here and just hang out with the chickens for the day. I'm so happy that we still have fresh, beautiful greens. I picked Swiss chard today and it looks great. Our spinach still looks good. I think carrots and beets are still good. Our lettuce kind of succumbed to all the wet. It's kind of soggy and a little gross, um, but we still have quite a good offering out there in the garden. And it's noticeably warmer in here than it is outside. When I stepped in here, I was like, oh, still chilly, but it's protected from wind and we can get some really strong winds here. And I really wanted to keep the coop free of big drafts. Um, so we lined the run with plexi and then the top has um, that corrugated, I don't know what it's made out of 
but it's it looks like kind of like plexiglass uh, but the top here has a good I don't know four inch section all the way around the top that's open so there's still really good ventilation like I can feel some air in here moving around but nothing like it is outside which is so so nice and it never gets to be a muddy mess in here <sighs> It just, it makes me feel better <laughs> uh, to do that. I know chickens are pretty tough birds and they don't need a ton of extra helps um, unless you live in a really severe climate, but it makes me feel good to provide a nice little cozy home for them. And some good healthy treats, huh girls? And that is gonna be it for today's video. So, so happy. That was like the last big chore that was weighing on me. Like if we get little bits of cleanup here and there, some annuals that are just kind of flopped over and looking bad, that's fine. If it has to wait till spring, that's fine. It's just really nice that we had this window of opportunity just to get those bulbs in the ground. And I can just put a big check mark by that one and just wait for spring and wait for the glorious show I think we're gonna have out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're all are doing really well and enjoying the holiday season. We will see you in the next video. Bye.